there's four mindset triggers and these are kind of replicable. The way we get to them is replicable kind of analyses of the entire literature within mindset and mindset culture. And so, you know, most people identify with at least one, often more than one of these triggers. And those are evaluative situations is the first mindset trigger, um, which is really when we anticipate being evaluated. We're going to give a performance of some sort. We're going to um, have a speech that we deliver. We're delivering a report that we know is going to be widely read um, and potentially critiqued. Um, how do we prepare for that evaluative situation in advance of it? If this is our fixed mindset trigger, we tend to say, um, all I want to do is show people how smart I am, that I'm capable, right? I want to show them that I'm that genius in this culture of genius. And so you might do things like not leave a lot of time at the end of your talk, right? Or at the end of your presentation for questions, because you really don't want people asking questions, um, you know, because it could undermine your ideas. Whereas for others, evaluative situations are their growth mindset trigger, right? It's really moving them. My biggest goal here is not necessarily to show how smart I am, but it's to actually learn as much as possible in this presentation that I'm going to give. So I'm going to provide maybe different kinds of information. I'm going to talk about, yes, the successes that we've had, but also some of the challenges and then ask people, you know, for ideas and brainstorm how to make something better, right? Leaving a lot of time for um, response and feedback, um, particularly critical feedback to make something better. The second mindset trigger is high effort situations. And this is usually when people are taking on something new, like a stretch assignment or a new role in an organization. Um, kids experience this a lot when they're moving between elementary school and middle school, um, where it's a real shift in what is expected of them um, in school. Um, or when you're taking on a new hobby, you know, this is a high effort situation where you're going to have to learn something. I recently took up cello. And so it's a high effort situation to figure out how to hold uh, the cello and how to bow. I just got permission to start bowing after picking. Um, and so, um, you know, these kinds of situations can really move people to their fixed mindset where they think if I have to try hard, it must mean that maybe I don't have this natural talent or ability, right? That the culture of genius prizes. Um, whereas if this is our growth mindset trigger, high effort situations are seen as really exciting challenges and opportunities. Like the only way to grow and develop is to actually work hard and try new things, take on new strategies, right? And so they are galvanized by high effort situations um, when that's our growth mindset trigger. Um, the third one is critical feedback. When critical feedback actually does arrive after we've given the talk or made the presentation or released the report, now the critical feedback has arrived. And when we are thinking about that feedback as um, an indictment of our own ability, we start to take it personally, right? Then we've seen ourselves move towards our fixed mindset. That's become a fixed mindset trigger for us. And then we start to do things like dismiss the feedback. Oh, he or she doesn't know what she's talking about, right? Um, if this is our growth mindset uh, trigger, that critical feedback is seen as a way in which to pinpoint the ways in which we can improve uh, the outcome, the thing that we're working on. And so um, people who are really in their growth mindset are hungry for critical feedback and they become unsatisfied in their role um, if they're not getting critical feedback consistently because they feel like, They've either been dismissed or people don't believe in their ability to grow. Why aren't you telling me how to improve? Why aren't you sharing with me some strategies, right? Because I, my goal is to improve and develop. And if you as a manager or supervisor are not providing me that critical feedback, it's really hard for me to figure out, you know, what I'm doing well and what I need to improve in order to get to the next level. So um, knowing whether your direct report has critical feedback as a fixed or growth mindset trigger is really important when delivering that critical feedback. It'll make a difference as to how you uh, deliver it. And then the last um, mindset trigger is the success of others. And this is a big one in academia. It's a big one, I think, everywhere where people are really looking at their cohort of people. They might have one or two people in their career that you kind of pay attention to what they're doing, the awards they're winning, the thing, the accolades they're receiving. And um, you know, for some people, uh, the success of others, when the, another team member is praised on the team, it really puts them towards their fixed mindset. They say, wow, um, success and praise seems like a zero sum game. They're getting it. That means that I 
do not and that I will not. And um, it often leads to people kind of getting demotivated or disengaged where they're like, I'll never be able to do it as good as Charles does it. So why should I even try? Right. And then in our growth mindset, that same situation, the success of others, the praise of someone on a team can really inspire us. And we can actually think about it and approach that person and say, try to understand what did they do to prepare? What did they do to actually reach their goal um, that was so successful? And then we can figure out not how we do it exactly like them, but some strategies and ideas for how we might more authentically pursue our own goals. Um, and so we reap inspiration from the success of others. 